Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Ryan with Iowa Classic Cars, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be starting to clean out the 1964 Field Find Impala, and figured before I do that, I would make a video just kind of highlighting the car um, as is before it gets cleaned out. So the car has some rust in the uh, in the lower quarter panels and the lower fenders. Pretty common on these years of Impala. It's missing three tail lights as well as the, the bumper middle section. But really, it's not too bad. Missing one piece of trim up top, which I've got. But right here is basically the worst part of it, and it's just a little bit of Bondo. I mean, the metal doesn't look all that bad, really. Just one smeared some Bondo over it. Same with the, uh, with the lower fenders. You can see the, the Bondo there. It's got a real nice patina. I know some guys say patina equals rust. Um, I would say I agree with you half the time. Stuff like the, the surface rust here on the roof doesn't take away from the structural integrity of the vehicle whatsoever. It just shows its age. The story I got with this car was the guy uh, wrecked it back in the, back in the day and he had a 64 as well. That was this bluish green color, and he put the front clip and a door on it. So as you see here, all the algae and the 30 years of, of dirt and grime just sitting on this car, so hopefully it'll clean up fairly nice. Door panels are there, but they're they're pretty rough and, and really dirty. Dash is a padded dash car, kind of a neat option. And all the poop in the world. Seats are all there. Headliner's pretty ratty. Back seat's there. It does have some rust in the floors. You can see right there. And then over there. But really, for what it is being an Iowa car, it's not terrible. So we'll, uh, I'm not going to film me power washing this car today. It's too cold for that, but I'm going to clean it up and, and see what it looks like after that. Stay tuned. All right, everyone. So we got it power washed. Took a ton of the algae off the car. Rockers are in good shape. That's nice to see. Door's pretty clean. It's got a couple spots right there, but... Hell, some good body man could fix that pretty pretty easy. Quarter panels look a lot nicer. Um, the paint's more uniform, and it definitely shows its age and its patina. We had like eight inches of snow yesterday, so I'm trudging through a snow drift. Back tail pan cleaned up real nice. Again, it's got that real nice, real nice original paint patina to it. I'm a big fan of the of the patina look. Passenger side cleaned up somewhat. Rocker, again, on this side, is in pretty good shape. This metal is there, you know, but you definitely see it's got a crease in it. So, so it was hit, or, you know, it, it touched something at one time and, and you wrinkled that fender, thus the Bondo. Doors over here, this door is real clean. It's starting to blister right there, but, you know, Impala doors are pretty hard to find in real clean condition so definitely workable this fender showing some of that original blue paint this is like a surface rust i couldn't get that off of there if you want to see a video on my trick on how to get surface rust off of paint without ruining the paint leave a comment and i can definitely make that and the hood which was the dirtiest of all as you can see it's got that real nice real nice blue paint to it so the hood cleaned up awesome grill is a little wrinkled it's it's folded on the right side there as you can see but not not terrible i think this will be a definite good car for someone to build so again i'm going to clean out the interior now uh, i'm not going to bore you with all of that just because there is a lot of fecal matter and Stuff that I don't want to be touching, and especially getting my, my camera around and bringing that in the house. So 
I will uh, clean this thing out and report back. Alrighty everyone, I uh, vacuumed it out, cleaned all the crap out of it, and uh, this is what we got here. So I didn't clean the motor out, it just, it's too cold, the sun's going down. I did not clean the trunk out all the way because it took a while to get into the trunk. Um, but real quick, I didn't, I didn't show anyone the motor. It's a 327 four barrel, and I believe in 64, these would have been 300 horse. Um, someone in the comments can correct me if I'm wrong there, um, but I believe it's a 300 horse 327. It's a column shift manual, which is kind of unique, I've been told, on these uh, 63s and 4s. But our Nat really doesn't have any too, you know, too many options. It's got manual brakes and a two-speed wiper motor. But other than that, no air conditioning, no power steering, pretty much. Just, uh, just a bare-bones motor made to go fast. The interior cleaned up pretty nice. Um, it showed a little more rust in the floors than I would have liked to see. There's a spot there and a spot back there, which I found, um, you know, once I cleaned it out. The seat cleaned up all right. It's not perfect by any means, but it's a good solid start. I mean, there's still the plating on the uh, on the springs. Same with the back seat. I also found that the back seat has a seat cover on it, which kind of protected the bottom half of the seat. The top half, not so much. The trunk here isn't terrible. It does have two rust spots right behind the rear wheels, which is very common on these 61 through 64 GMs. I'm not sure why they rust right there. Um, I'm assuming probably just the back tire throws stuff up and it gets uh, and it gets rusty, but you know, it is, uh, it is blown out there. And also you can see that the, the top of the trunk here is getting a little thin. That's pretty easy to fix, that's just sheet metal. This stuff is pretty easy as well, but there is a body mount that is attached to the front of it. So that would probably need a little more in-depth fixing. Trunk lid is pretty nice. It's got some scale on it, but no, no significant rust. The passenger side here is what I'm kind of disappointed to see, is that the whole floor, or I should say the whole toe pan on the front passenger side definitely needs replaced. And the back toe pan on the passenger side is starting to go. It doesn't look like it's into the rockers, um, which is a good thing. You know, the whole rocker doesn't need to replace, but it would definitely need probably a full pan and braces. You know, when you're in Iowa in the Midwest, you kind of expect those things anyways, but it's always nice to find a car, you know, that doesn't, doesn't need a significant metal work. So the next thing with this car, expect in the next month or so, we're going to try to get the motor to run. Um, it is stuck right now. I believe it's just the rings, you know, from sitting so long. Um, and if we can get it running, we'll be uh, driving it around, you know, around the farm here, not on the road, obviously. But once uh, once that's done, the car will be up for sale. I do like these Impalas, but they're not uh, they're not my first choice for a keeper vehicle. And you know what? I did uh, I did half the mission by digging it out. Let someone else take it all the way and finish it and bring it back the way it should be. So with all that being said, you guys, if you did enjoy the video for today, please make sure to leave a comment and a like rating and subscribe for more videos like this on a weekly basis. I've also got a 59 Buick, a 62 Impala, a 59 Nomad, and then three 59s. One's an Impala Tudor hardtop and then two Bel Air four doors. Might make a video on those someday. I don't know. But with all that being said, thank you guys for watching. My name is Ryan. Until next time, thanks for watching.